We took 8,000 LEDs and built a display that uses 3D tracking to create an interactive volumetric exhibit. Today, we will go into not only how we built this exhibit, but we will also break down our design decisions and the hurdles we faced. Let's look into how we made the Vivid Volume. What is a hologram? How do you take digital imagery and turn it into a three-dimensional experience? I dabbled with creating volumetric displays with our previous project, The Radiant Rose. That project was designed with 3D animations in mind. While the display looked cool, I always thought it fell short of feeling like a 3D visualizer. One day, I was browsing the internet and I started finding videos of people creating 3D cubes with LEDs. Right there, I started designing a system that would allow me to create a giant LED cube. I wanted my cube to be interactive, so we need to figure out how to run it in real time. This design really came together when we discovered these programmable LED curtains. The LEDs can be individually controlled and already come in a set grid. They use a standard connection protocol, so they are a great base to build our display off of. We will be using 20 of these curtains in our display. We designed this hanging frame that uses two main aluminum bars and 20 secondary bars to create our grid frame. This frame has four mounting points at the end of the main bars. These were measured and built to be hung in a truss square. This arrangement gave us many mounting options for installations at future events and venues. For Blink Festival, the display will be freestanding, so we designed it around being mounted on vertical truss sections to create a cube like this. Our electronics for this project are relatively simple. We were able to utilize a pixel control board and power supply from a previous project. Let's break down the design of our electronics. <sighs> ah, now hold on, this is the part where I need to clarify that I am not an electrician. After I designed this display and calculated my power needs, I made sure to work with an expert to confirm my display would function and be safe. This is Ryan. He is my expert. He told me my design would not blow up, so we're good. We have 20 LED curtains to power and control. Each LED curtain has an input connector that carries our data and power connections. We need a pixel control board to take that data from our computer and send the proper signal to our LEDs. This board connects to our computer via ethernet. We also have our power supplies that powers the board and the pixels. From our control board, we have our power and data going through weatherproof connectors at the curtain. This is all sealed in an electrical box that sits above the display. Along with this, we have a depth sensing camera that will sit in front of the display. Now that we have our design locked in, let's build our structure. We need to take aluminum tubing and prep them to assemble into a grid. So we have 20 bars that are cut to two meter lengths and two bars that are cut a little bit longer. These longer bars will be our main span that our 20 bars will connect to. Now I measure and drill out 20 equally spaced holes on these main spans. After that, we drill two holes in our secondary bars that will connect to the main bars. I test fit this structure to make sure it all works. This coincided with my regret in planning such a big project in such a small workspace, but hey, I'm ambitious. To get the curtains attached to the bars, I initially was gonna put screws in and the bars would connect the curtains to that. But after a long time working in my improvised machine shop, AKA my garage, I decided to make my life simpler and use zip ties. I took the time to measure equal distance marks on each bar. I then attached the curtain one by one and used a piece of tape across the top to keep the zip ties in place. I made two sets of curtains, each set having the curtains offset by five centimeters. This helped fill out our display and make it look more dense to patrons. Our last step was to use truss clamps on our main spans that will attach the entire array to our supports. We also made a last minute decision on site to add some wooden rods along the bottom of the curtains. We realized the free hanging curtains would get tangled with the wind. I actually thought about putting some supports on the bottoms in the original design, but I didn't implement them. Honestly, because I'm lazy and I thought I could get by without them. Whoops. This might be problematic. What you can't get by without is subscribing to this channel and liking this video. The support really helps the channel grow and help me make more cool projects. Next, we needed to test our tracking method. For a 3D display, we're gonna need a camera that can track in 3D. We're gonna use the Connect Azure camera. This camera not only takes video data, but it uses LiDAR to get depth data as well. We can then combine these two sources of data and get a 3D point cloud with color information. So how do we take this data and turn it into something that can drive our LED curtains? For my display, I like to use video sources to drive my pixels. There are other approaches for controlling LEDs, but I like using this workflow. So we need to figure out how to turn this 3D data into something that can be mapped onto our LEDs. We're gonna use pixel mapping to achieve this. 
pixel mapping basically samples an image source and spits out RGB values that our pixels can use. So we have to figure out how to turn our 3D point cloud into 20 slices that we can map to our curtains. Inside Touch Designer, we can use a process called depth peeling to separate our point cloud into smaller layers. We take a virtual camera using an orthographic viewpoint pointed at our point cloud. This makes sure we get a good view of our points without any lens distortion. Using the depth peel, we then sample 20 equally sized segments of our data. This data is then output into 20 separate video layers we can use later in the process. Luckily, we are only rendering the point cloud once, so this process is pretty light on our processor. So we now have a video source for each of our 20 curtains. You can see here, as I step closer to the camera, it will step through the different layers. Now we need to prep this data for our pixel mapping stage. Generally, when you pixel map, it's best to have a single video source to map all of your pixels. We are gonna take our 20 layers and combine them into a single grid. Pixel mapping inside Touch Designer is relatively straightforward. I've linked to a tutorial below that I use as the basis for my mapping. Basically, you take a spline with the same number of points and in the same order as your pixels and project it onto your image source. This then gives you RGB values for each of these points. One thing I took time to refine was the patron experience. Our last major project, The Glowing Gardens, had a great interactive element, but how to use it wasn't clear to patrons. Our goal for the project was to make it obvious how to use this display and inviting to try out. When nobody was in the box, the display would show a pre-built animation directing people to the space. Once the camera picked up any movement, the display would switch to interactive mode. When patrons would leave, it would switch back. I also built a special timer that climbed higher the longer the patrons stayed in the interactive zone. This timer would delay when the display would switch back to its pre-built animation. The intended experience was for you to walk up to the display and for it to instantly switch and show your light reflection. When you're done, you step out. If someone steps in, it shows the reflection. If no one steps in, then it transitions back to the pre-built animation after around 10 seconds, inviting new patrons to try it out. So now we need to combine all of these components together to make our final display. Patrons step into the interactive zone and our camera is gonna take color and depth data into the computer. That data then gets turned into a point cloud which is rendered in 3D in the computer. We then slice that point cloud into 20 segments using depth peeling. We take our mapping splines and project it onto the source. This gives us RGB values for each pixel, which we then send out to our pixel controller. The controller then takes the data and converts it into signals our pixels can understand and sends it out. We finished up our display. Let's get it set up and showcase it to the world. Thanks for checking out this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're gonna be breaking down more light projects in the future and uh, I hope to get your suggestions. If you have any cool ideas for more light projects, make sure to leave a comment below.